In this video we're going to talk about loading a backdrop image into uh, the Floriani software. Uh, that background or backdrop as they call it image is uh, used as a reference to allow you to digitize on top of that um, giving you a shape to follow uh, is what that really is used for. We're going to start out though here in Corel Draw where I've drawn a uh, very simple um, object here on the screen. I've got a star that has a border around it and um, I've got a capital G in the middle of the star. Um, what we're going to do, um, we're not going to cover how to do this in Corel Draw. That's not really the point of the video. We're going to um, select this though and we're going to export it out of Corel Draw. And uh, since we're going to load it into Floriani in a or as a backdrop image, uh, we're going to do our export as a JPEG and in this case I'm just going to call it temp.jpg. We're going to go ahead and export that and um, the default comes up here on my Corel draw at 100 dpi and I'm going to go ahead and make that a little higher. I'm going to say 300 dpi. Again our purpose here really isn't to explain what we're doing in Corel draw. Anybody that uses Corel draw um, will see the basic steps here of exporting it. Now I exported that um, JPEG image right onto my desktop. So what I'm going to do is go down here um, and switch over here to the Floriani software. And we'll go up to File and Load Backdrop is what we're going to select. Now this is um, where uh, my computer is looking. It's looking onto my desktop so I called it temp so I need to scroll over here. Find the file called temp and as you can see the little preview shows up. That's the file we want and we'll just click open. That brings the backdrop into Floriani uh, which pretty much looks exactly like it did in Corel Draw. Um, now like I said this backdrop is not used. You can't convert this like you could artwork into stitches or anything like that. It's only used as a reference. In fact it, as you can see on our page here it doesn't show up in our sequence view in any way because it's not really part of the design. So what we're going to do here is I'm real quickly going to digitize this simple image um, into um, actually I'm going to make it three colors here even though it only shows two just to show you how you would use this to as a pattern for your digitizing. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of examine how I want to digitize this. Um, now real quickly looking at this I'm going to say that we're going to fill that star. I'm going to use a complex fill to fill that. Then the next sequence I need to do would be I need to put the border on that star. Um, and the reason I do that instead of putting the G on which logically could go next is anytime I fill something that's going to be bordered I want to fill it. I want to put the border the very next thing before I do anything else. Um, to keep registration as close as possible. There's no reason to put that G on top which would tend to pull that fill slightly out of shape. When I go to put my border on you always have more of a chance of something not aligning. So remember that. Always do your fill and whenever possible get the border on it as quickly as possible and don't go on to other details in the design and if if possible before you do that. So we're going to start out quickly here by going up and selecting our complex fill option here and we're just going to this is a real easy task just we're just going to trace the outline of this star with that tool. Go around that real quickly and after I was done I right clicked and as you can see I'll put the 3D view on for so you can see a little better. We now have um, a fill stitch around that star and um, I'm going to go ahead and change that to, to red so it kind of is keeps the color that we had originally there. So now that we've got that done the next thing we need to do is put a border around that fill. And to do that I'm actually going to go over here to our sequence view and I'm going to turn off that complex fill as far as the view option of that um, by just clicking on that little eye there. Now that it's grayed out that it's not in the way and I don't need to um, look through it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'll just use a steel 
um, stitch here and I'm pretty much going to do the same thing as I did before just going to go around this same shape again with this um, steel stitch and finish that up pretty much the same thing as we did with the complex fill uh, the steel stitch is just a different type of stitch and it will be processed differently so I'm going to right click on that as you can see we have finished off that steel stitch all the way around the star. Now the first thing you're going to notice is um, our corners here are are squared off except for our top one is actually comes to a point and rather than trying to fix all these let's say we wanted them pointed there's always a way to do that but probably not with a steel stitch I'm going to go ahead and fix this one so it is not um, pointed and just looks like the rest and I'm going to do that I'm going to um, turn our stitches back on here and I'm going to highlight the steel stitch and go over here and use my shape tool and um, I'm going to zoom in right here on the top and we're going to look at why that is like that again we'll go back to our shape tool as we can see our start and stop points are right here at the top and the reason we've got a point there is we've got two points instead of one point all the other ones had one point in the corner and since we started and stopped here we have two so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put these points together here let's see if we can uh, close the line and see if that fixes it for us it's not really working out there let's see we still have two points so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this point here delete point and right click again to have it redraw and now we've got the shape we want we've got a flat top up there um, remember each one of these had one point on it and since I started and stopped there there was two so we just needed to close that line up and delete one of the points so we just had one they're all now the same um, one thing that I see that I don't like is I now have my stop point down here and start point I'm gonna go ahead and move them back up here to the top uh, probably not a big difference there but something I'm going to do now um, our steel stitch outline is now um, stitched in the same color I'm just going to go up here click on commands we're going to bump that up to color 2 so our color 2 then will change to black and we now have black outline so now we have the star we have a border uh, the borders probably pretty thick here we could go up here and take that to 2.5 millimeter steel stitch, um, make it a little thinner there. Then we're going to go, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off that complex fill again so I'm not viewing it. That way I can see my G. And we're going to go back in here and we're going to zoom in on just the G. And I'm going to digitize the G, and I'm going to do it with a classic satin because that's what I'm familiar with that's the way I like to to do things um, we could do it with a satin stitch but I'm just much more familiar with the satin uh, the classic satin stitch so I'm gonna start that out right here is the way I'm going to digitize this now remember anytime you're digitizing there's always many different ways to do it many different stitch directions and many different stitch types so nobody is ever going to interpret the same artwork the same way uh, which is a good thing because we get a lot of variety and yes some do look better than others but in the in a bad way is when you're trying to duplicate a piece of embroidery it can be a nightmare because somebody else has digitized it in a way you're just not familiar with so that being said I'm gonna start out here and go through this design here with my classic satin tool and I'm not going to completely worry about that I'm getting this shape right for two reasons I can edit it plus we just want to get through the video we're not necessarily teaching you exactly how to digitize something here we're more interested in and in showing you how that backdrop works so that's my first piece we were gonna start here and we're gonna come around and we're gonna end here this may look a little funny and I will probably clean that up when I'm done as we can see 
I did not end this in a white. I went ahead and brought this stitch down to a point here, which will help our overlap. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do is click on my classic satin again, and we're going to start another classic satin stitch. And we're going to overlap this. And we're going to end that right there. So I just right click and as we can see our G is now stitched. Uh, we've got a we've got two satin objects here because I actually did it in two pieces which is the way I see it anyway. But we're going to select that one and we're going to take this and we're going to go to color 3 on that one. Apply that. Color 3 is green. That'll show up good. We're going to zoom out a little bit here. Turn our complex fill that we had turned off. We're going to turn it back on by clicking on that. And as you can see we have a a star here. Um, just like we had started with in Corel Draw. Uh, we use the complex fill to give our background to it. Uh, we used a steel stitch to go around the edge and then I used a classic um, column stitch to form the G. Just to give you a reference of what this is, if you look up here, uh, this star is about two and a half inches roughly um, tall and wide and um, that's why I chose the stitch types that I did. So. Hopefully that will give you an idea of how you would use the backdrop, uh, you know, a backdrop image to digitize from. And um, in another video here I'm going to take the same exact design and I'm going to import it as artwork and show you how we would take that artwork and turn it into stitches um, by importing it as artwork versus a backdrop image. So I hope that helps everyone out.